Hello and welcome. I'm Peggy, and I'm so glad you let us be a part of your day. And today I am thrilled to have two people here that we're going to share and talk about young people and education and where we are and where we need to go. And Converse College has blessed not only the Southeast, but the whole United States for 125 years. And they are in Spartanburg, and they're still thriving, and they're reaching out to young women and enriching so many lives. And I, it's just a joy to celebrate with you I want, I want everybody to know Sally Hammond is here, and Sally is the Vice President for Marketing and Enrollment at That's Converse right. College, and Jeffrey Barker, and Jeffrey is Director of Media Relations. No. And, right? No. Well, that's what I was told, but uh -oh. I apologize. Well, Jeff, can I'm the Vice President for Academic Affairs and Dean of the School of Humanities and Sciences. Okay. But when they sent me this information, that's what they sent. But we're delighted to have you on any, on any level. I'm just so happy to be here. And Converse, 120, you, you graduated. I did. I'm an alumna from the class of 1981. But it's, we have a rich and storied past. Um, and, and Jeff, you can How jump in How did this anytime. all come about? Well, a, a textile magnet from Vermont, uh, Dexter Edgar Converse, um, made his way uh, to Spartanburg and his daughter Marie uh, was coming of age and he looked around the upstate and found nothing comparable to the quality of the educational institutions in the Northeast from which he had come and made it his mission along with other members of the Spartanburg mm -hmm. community to found a college uh, dedicated to advancing women and so he did and 125 years later we have grown and, and are flourishing. How many students now? We have 750 undergraduate students and about 500 graduate students in our various programs. You know, one of the things that's unusual about Dexter Edgar Converse's founding is that he went to the citizens of Spartanburg and took up a collection to found this college. So the business leaders of Spartanburg contributed and it really has become Spartanburg's college. That's amazing. Now, it is not associated with any church, or, or was it ever? No, it was not, and <clears throat> Dexter Edgar Converse said that he wanted the school to be liberally but tolerantly Christian, and not to be sectarian, but to really be a college for Spartanburg and the upstate. And, and, it, I, and I think over the years, um, we have done both that and as well as expand, and we have students really from all over the country and throughout the uh, throughout the world, we we have currently in the in the freshman class that we've just brought in this fall, uh, I think 16 states represented and six countries. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a very diverse population. And then of course our graduate uh, program is, is a co-educational graduate program, both on campus and has online offerings. Now the one thing, and we've got lots to cover, mm -hmm. but we do. the one thing that I read in the paper, and I salute you for this, that you're finding a way to reduce the cost of tuition. And I worry about some of these wonderful young people who are struggling to go to school, many of them working at the same time, and when they graduate, they have all this debt before they've even earned a paycheck. And of course, there are scholarships, and I'm sure We'll ask about that. There are scholarships in, in most schools, and I'm sure Converse is no different. But um, the fact that you people, you're kind of a beacon of hope because you've, you've decided this is something you need to tackle. We have, and we're concerned as well about the student debt situation and about the question of access and affordability. We listen to our own students, our current students, and their struggles with dealing with college expenses and decided that what we needed to do was have a system that's clear and transparent, straightforward with our students and to have a reduction in the sticker price that tells our students as closely as possible what it costs to educate them and deals with them with that kind of pricing structure so that we have a way for them to move forward. 
So I, I'm hoping that since you have reached out to the community in this way, that maybe you're, you're a beacon of light to some of these other schools that will also look at the cost and say, how can we reduce this cost? Well, I, you know, I think you're absolutely right. And, and um, most any of us who pick up the paper or turn on the television, listen to the news, uh, headlines about the escalating costs of higher education are an everyday uh, occurrence. That's right. Um, and there's, we have heard, um, and, and I think the, the popular media would tell you the same thing, a hue and cry from American families and students um, that, it, that, that um, the costs of tuition were outstripping the pace of inflation. Um, and, and when we did the numbers at Converse and, and did some looking, um, we realized we were on a trajectory that just was not susta sustainable. And, 10 years, our tuition would be $50,000. And when the median income uh, for the average household income is, what, $50,000, $53,000, it just didn't, it, it just wasn't um, appropriate uh, to continue on that same path. So you're making so we, so we, um, you're we, not we work your for standards. about 18 months. You're not lowering your standards. Absolutely not, no. That's what you want people to know. Absolutely, and this is, um, this is really part of a larger plan um, that has many components, and the tuition reset was one, uh, one aspect uh, of that plan that, that just further uh, undergirds the college and, and advances what we do. And you may want to speak to that. Certainly. We've been involved in a strategic planning <laughs> process for almost two years. And the tuition reset, as Sally said, was one part of that. But another part, just as important, is what we're doing with our programs. Mm -hmm. We looked at several important factors. What is it that's in demand right now in our society and in our region? What is it that our graduates would be able to do and look forward to doing after they graduate? What is it that's in demand from our students? What do they want to study? What are they looking to study? And from that, we selected a range of new programs, including a program in genetic counseling, a program in sports management, and one in collaborative piano accompaniment. And then we're augmenting our existing programs, our strong programs that students have always wanted to study and where there will be jobs after they graduate. That's an equally important part. The key is to offer the best possible value to students, both in terms of the price and in terms of the programs. You have on your campus foreign students as well, but you mm -hmm. also have the in-depth study of other languages. Yes, we do. Sally, you mentioned, uh, was it? Arabic. 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 Uh, German, um. French, and Spanish. We offer Japanese language and culture courses, and then working with our partner institution across town, Wofford College, Chinese language and culture. And that's very important in the world. Mm -hmm. These young people are going to have to live in. Yes. Whether and, we like it or not. And it's interesting. You know, you talk about the students on our campus, um, and and I I would probably I don't want to speak for Jeff, but it it is. Um, that is what makes us or me most passionate is mm -hmm. watching the development of those young people over the course of, of their four years at Converse. And um, more often than not, our students come uh, not just with aspirations to major in one field of study, but major and minor. And so many leave with both a major and a minor. Um, and our graduates are going out into the world doing just phenomenal things um, and make an impact not only in the community but across the, the country and, and certainly globally as well. It's pretty astounding. So you feel, I mean, you mentioned Arabic, you mentioned Chinese. That's the world they're <laughs> going to live in. And so you're giving them an opportunity to learn these languages. We're not only giving them the opportunity to learn the languages, we make sure they have opportunities for practical experiences in using the languages. That's, yeah, you can conjugate verbs forever, but, right. Right, but what do you do when you're in a room of people and you don't speak their language? Right. And let me just give you one example. We have a, a nationally known debating team, the Model League of Arab States debating team. We, oh. on a regular basis, 
defeat in competition, certain schools from the Northeast, you, you've probably heard of Harvard mm -hmm. and a few yes. of those schools. We, we defeat it then on a regular basis. <laughs> We're proud you. of that. <laughs> but the practical import of that is we have students who learn modern standard Arabic and who learn international relations mm -hmm. and who have experiences in Washington, D.C. and in the Middle East. And to give you just one example, a student from Gaffney who had never been outside of the upstate came to Converse, became part of these programs, became fluent in modern standard Arabic. We had her studying the language in Morocco as well as here. She just returned from an assignment as a consular official at the U.S. consulate in Geneva, and she's well on her way to becoming a secretary of state for this country. Now, from what, how old is she? Um, she is probably about 26 now. Probably about That's 26 amazing. or 27. That's amazing. A young woman by the name of Casey Addis. Just and she had never been a world no. traveler. No. And she had these opportunities and yes. latched onto them. And we have a, a tremendous study program, uh, study travel program as well, that, that um, ensures that students are traveling and um, you know, seeing uh, what in the world is out there. Now, you also have a great outreach, not just to your student body, but to, I mean, you have concert programs, mm -hmm. lectures, things that, that just mm -hmm. all of us can attend, and many of them are free. That's true. We have more than 150 musical events every year. Almost all of them are open to the public and free. We have wonderful, wonderful theater productions. Mm -hmm. We have lectures from leading scientists. It's a vibrant campus. And, and you may also know of the Lawson Academy of the Arts. And so there's, there's a, a, a hub program within the college that reaches out and um, brings children, young children of mm. all ages, and, and even adults, um, onto our campus for uh, music, dance, uh, and theater lessons. Yeah, they do. And, and, and often many of them are taught by our undergraduate students. That's beautiful. We are going to go to a quick break and we're going to come back and we do have a website and uh, we're going to talk about why a college just for women. Okay, okay. we'll be right back. Welcome back, and I quickly want to reintroduce the people sitting here with me from Converse College in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and of course, Sally Hammond is here, and she is a, a graduate I, right. herself, and you are Vice President for Marketing enrollment. and Enrollment, and then Jeffrey Barker, and he is a professor of, of uh, Physiology? Of philosophy. And ph uh, philosophy, what's wrong with me? <laughs> but what I wanted, they sent me some information that was not accurate. And you are vice president for academic affairs. That's correct. At Converse. I am. Okay, now we've got that right. So I want people to know that this school is celebrating 125 yes. years. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. It is. And that it is a school for young women. Mm -hmm. Founded. Uh, in 1889 for women um, and we've been doing that um, successfully and, and continue to um, evolve in the way that we educate women and I think that you know for anyone who uh, were to visit Converse um, I, I think a point of pride for all of us who, who are there who, who work there who teach there um, who recruit students to the college um, what you'll see are incredibly poised and articulate uh, young women who come to us with uh, strong aspirations um, and, and are uh, in an atmosphere where there's a small student-to-faculty -faculty ratio, 11 to 1, um, and they really do, over the course of their, their tenure at Converse, find their voice. Um, understand better their value to the world and, and then perhaps um, are able to more clearly uh, see w what is my vision for the future and they do they go on and, and change the world in so many ways so um, 
it's, it's a pretty incredible thing. Um, and I think that they would tell you that many of our students will say that they come to Converse in spite of the fact that it's a women's college, mm -hmm. but stay precisely because it is a women's college. Yeah, so it, this is a choice mm -hmm. it is. that many young women choose to make. Mm -hmm. And you do have scholarship programs. We do, and as we just mentioned a minute ago, um, we, we had just recently announced that the college is reducing its tuition mm -hmm. um, from 29000 to 16500 See, fall. nothing ever comes down in this world. <laughs> That's I think right. you all are geniuses. Well, it's a 43% <laughs> reduction from, um, from that, from our, our former tuition. Um, and this will be for the entering class of uh, incoming students for fall 2013. Um, and and you, know, you mentioned earlier about the importance of, it's, it is paramount to us for students to be able to, talented young women to be able to access a private education that is customized, that um, will support them in, in their efforts, um, but that will not leave them burdened as adults with uh, yeah. great debt load. So we are committed to that and, and we're excited about providing this opportunity to that many more young women. Well, now, Jeffrey, if I may, you, it says here that you, you are um, very active in the community mm -hmm. and that you are a resource to hospitals. Uh, in what way? How does, I, know, I know you graduated, from, one of your degrees is from Purdue in Indiana. My field is in biomedical ethics and philosophy, and for years I've worked with assisted care facilities and okay. with institutional review boards in hospitals to review research proposals. And for many years, for many decades actually, I've worked with hospice. Hospice is one of my passions, a labor of love, and I work with Spartanburg Regional Hospice in Spartanburg and try to integrate those efforts with what we do in the classroom so that our students in philosophy and other fields will be able to experience that kind of community involvement. Mm -hmm. And it's those sorts of partnerships that are absolutely uh, a linchpin, I think, um, to some of the things that we're doing um, and, and critical to our success. The, the practicums that our students are taking advantage of and the internships and um, even the job opportunities that they have uh, in, in the upstate um, as a result of those partnerships are so important um, for their, uh, their growth and development. Now you have opportunities for some of these young people to study in, Absolutely. around um, the world. For, yes, around the world and even in our own backyard. For instance, um, our music therapy program is uh, one of the only music therapy programs in the state. Am I correct about that? That's correct. One of the few. Uh, one of the few. And our students have a, a tremendous opportunity to um, partner with Spartanburg Regional Healthcare System and um, take that music therapy um, into the hospital and directly work one-on-one -on -one with patients. And you, because you do have many talented people in the music field. Oh, we do. We do. So you, they use that on an outreach. We have talented people in the music field and talented students in the art field as well who have similar sorts of experiences. For example, after the earthquake in Haiti, our art therapy students and faculty, together with some from other schools, travel to Haiti to work in the hospitals with children and to provide art therapy for those children who had lost all of their family members. It was a chance for our students to give back and at the same time to learn about the experiences of others in the world. That is, that's, that's tremendous. So most people have, you know, if you've just moved here, you know, you know, mm -hmm. you know there's Condors and there's Wofford and there's Furman and all. They know the names, mm -hmm. but what you, what you are doing really is a bit unique in well, this world. And I, and I would say, too, that I think that if there were one word that I could, that I would use to describe Converse right now in its 125th year, and that would be momentum. Um, we are a college on the grow. We've experienced tremendous enrollment growth um, in the last uh, few years. Um, that, in fact, is one of the reasons we've been able to uh, reduce tuition um, for undergraduate students. Um, we're in the process of uh, renovating the oldest residence mm -hmm. hall on campus, building a brand new field house for our uh, Division II athletic program. We compete at the highest level of any 
uh, women's college in the country um, with nine sports and uh, are bursting at the seams and so the new Marsha H. Gibbs Fieldhouse will be a wonderful addition to our athletes. Um, and there's, you know, on every corner of our campus there is just um, excitement and growth. And you mentioned a while back about the debating yes. team. Yes. We have the Model League of Arab States and we also have other model teams that travel around the East Coast and sometimes around the world. They actually lead these events in other parts of the world and they are championship teams. As one dean from a school in the Northeast said to me once, intellectually speaking, I wouldn't want to meet your students in a dark alley. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. And that's a good way to describe the Converse students and what happens. They transform. They come to Converse and they transform both themselves and the school. They become confident women who find their own voice. They've had value added to their lives and they really develop a clear vision. I want to ask you, Recently, there have been articles and there have been things on in the media mm -hmm. that um, a degree is really not as important mm -hmm. as it used to be mm -hmm. as far as what you do with your life. And you see on a daily basis all these bright young people. What is your answer to that? Well, let me tell you a very quick story about that. A former student of mine decided he would work with his brother and his brother's friend on a little project they had after graduation in San Francisco. They thought they would develop a company where people could post their own videos on the web. And they did. They call, decided to call it YouTube. Now, my former student, of course, is now, quite wealthy as a result of that. Yeah, I would imagine. He's developed his own company now that they sold their company to Google. But I had him come to talk to Converse students. And they asked him the same question. They said, well, do we really need that kind of degree to have your kind of success? And what he did is show them how, in fact, it was his degree, the education behind his degree, that made it possible for him to have the very ideas that led to his success. It was the patterns and habits of thinking that he developed as a student at a small college that led to that success. And we do know, um, you know, especially recent data tells us that um, the earning power of uh, graduates um, with a college degree is much higher than that of um, students with only a, a high school diploma. Um, and, and certainly then exponential, I would imagine yes. uh, it's the same as with every advanced degree. So um, we believe it's critically important. Um, and as, as Jeff said, especially for that, that the, the formation of um, that critical thinking, um, being able to problem solve, being able to uh, to to be adaptive and, and flexible in the world when, as you as you mentioned earlier, um, who knows what jobs these young women will be filling in yeah. 10, 15, 20 years. But being able to to um, chart p position yourself for anything um, is really important, and I think a liberal arts degree does that. And learning how to think, sure, learning and how to that think. is true for young men as well as young women. Uh, Absolutely. You know, and I think it's so important for our young people to have a dream, mm. to have something up there they are going to aspire to. Mm -hmm. And it all starts, it starts in nursery school. It does. And you build, and you build, and you build step by step. Well, you know, I, we hear our president, uh, President Betsy Fleming, who's been at Converse now going into her ninth year, says to our students all the time, um, you are here um, to learn and grow so that you will go out into the world and affect positive change. And make a difference. Um, and they, they do that. And what they do is they develop a dream, a vision that's bigger than themselves. And that's the sort of thing that a small college can do exceptionally well. Well, I am so thrilled that you came and shared with us and we wish you another 100 years of Thank success. You. Thank you. And 125 years for Converse College. 
and all the wonderful young people. Well, and we invite you, you to come so anytime. Much. I'd love and to. And your viewers. Thank you. And wherever you are, I say it, I'm going to say it again. If you have little children at home, <laughs> pick them up and read to them. We'll see you next time.